Hello and welcome to Norwood News. Today is Friday, July 15th, and I'm your host, Brian Boudreau. It's great to have you with us as we end another week here in Norwood. Some disappointing news out of Town Hall this week. Disney has deferred their Halloween project that would include the common as a focal point in the film. Late last week, the town of Norwood issued a formal press release stating that the much-anticipated filming would not be taking place later this summer. General Manager Tony Mizuko explains the situation. Disney had reached out to us and let us know that they were going to be postponing their production. So we were a little bit disappointed. A lot of work had gone into it and a lot of businesses and groups in town had worked with them on it. They told us it was a casting issue. They couldn't get the folks they wanted in the film to line up with when the film was going to shoot. Certainly I don't know anything about uh, a major, holi uh, major Hollywood movie and how they run. Apparently this is um, not unusual, although they did tell us it's very unusual for a shoot to come this close to production and then be postponed but it had to do with not getting uh, the people they wanted to act in the movie aligned with the schedule. We did offer some local actors. We said if they need some kids to be in the movie, we'll find them. If they need some adults, we'd find them. Uh, they, they did politely decline that. Mizuko hopes that Disney will return to Norwood not only to get the crown jewel of the Commonwealth on the big screen, but for local businesses to prosper from the production as well. Uh, the challenge is, will they come back here to Norwood? We're not certain. Could this be a six month pause? It could be a 12 month pause. By then you could have a new location company, a new production company. You could have new actors. You could have new executives at Disney. They could look at whole new sites and it may never come back. They've said that this is their goal and they do want to film here, so we hope it does. We're excited about the commercial prospects of the filming here, that places in town, some of the businesses would get seen and folks would come from outside to want to go to those businesses. So that's what we're going to miss. While it may not happen right now, hopefully this dream does come true. Last week, a local establishment that is well known across many surrounding towns and beyond announced their retirement after 49 years. Martha and Aaron Greenfield, owners of Brenner's Children's Shop, announced they will be closing their doors later this year after 49 incredible years in business. Megan Corbett and myself caught up with Martha and Aaron to talk about their amazing journey in the town of Norwood. The most favorite seeing and bringing in and dressing children. That was our favorite. I used to, used to, um, we had such gorgeous dresses. So when mothers came in and they needed for something, you know, special, I would work with the kids. And it was just, it was just great. It was wonderful. It made me feel happy, you know, that I could take care Tell of this one and that. Some of the kids were so used to it. They came in in bunches. Some with all the kids, and some of them who had to watch to jump into the window because, and stay there. Yeah, the little ones yeah, used yeah. to go into the window. Yeah, <laughs> inside. Yeah. Inside the window, they would jump well, over. Well, we've been and in just, the other you know, place too. But we'll be that's fine. you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the first place we had was further down the street, and we started that in 1973, and then in 1985, we came here in May, you know and um, because the store became available and we wanted just to expand. Well, I think this feels like home. Uh, I mean, you know, just because I live in Norwood doesn't mean, you know, anything. So this is my second home. This is our yeah. second home, yeah. am I right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, you know, going from one place to another and it's just everybody that comes in most of the time, 95% of these people know us from way back. Mm. And so it's, I'm going to miss taking care of these people, telling them what to do, what not to do, you know what I mean? And uh, so that's how it goes. We, you know, we wish to thank all of our communities and other people from other towns, you know, a great thank you for them, you know what I mean? Because that's, they're the ones that made us who we are today. You know, so being 49 years here, that means our customers had us do this. Martha and Aaron plan to move to Maryland to be with their daughter and grandchildren. Be sure to stop by over the next few months to wish them well. NCM wishes them all the luck and thanks them for their many years of service. A few weeks ago, we caught up with Town Facilities Director Paul Riccardi and received an update on the high school new track, field, and lights project. And here's Paul with another update. Hi, Paul Riccardi, Director of Facilities, and it's Tuesday morning, July 12th, and I'm up here at the high school field. And I think it's been about three weeks since I 
was here before and I'm here to give you another update. As you can see behind me, the field has been uh, laser leveled um, and uh, we have two light towers that are in the far side of the field. Um, the electrical conduit is not uh, over to them yet, but all the pull strings are in and they have uh, run the conduit underneath the track and underneath the bleachers and over to the press box and the next stage will be to run it across the parking lot across the road and into the electrical room. Um, we hope that's going to be done by the middle of August. That's our expectation. The track itself has been uh, leveled and we're going to be putting down the two layers of asphalt and that should go down by the first week of August. We need a three week cure time for that before we can do the resurfacing. The one main delay that we've uh, had is getting the actual material to make the turf. Um, it's a company out of Alabama and because of the global supply chain, they're having a hard time getting material. But as of this morning at our meeting, we got great news that the turf will be delivered August 8th. It's a three week uh, installation time and then when that's done we got to put the top coat on the track and then stripe it and that's going to add another three weeks so we are looking I mean, the worst case scenario will be done by the end of September hopefully uh, if everything goes well we're going to be a, a week earlier but we got to wait and see so uh, I'll be back in touch in another couple of weeks for another update thank you very much and have a great summer it's great to see the lights up and we'll see Paul again in a few weeks. When we come back, we'll have conservation agent Holly Jones. This past Saturday, the Neponset River Watershed Association hosted a cleanup day for the St. Street Riverfront Park that will be named after late assistant manager, Bernie Cooper. Many volunteers from the town joined in on the cleanup. Conservation agent Holly Jones updated Norwood News last week on the park's plans, but also the grant they were awarded to name the park after Bernie Cooper. Holly was leading the pack during the cleanup. Uh, what we're doing here today is uh, taking a stab at um, starting to remove some of the bittersweet vines, which uh, bittersweet is a invasive species that can climb up a tree and sort of choke it and, you know, prevent it from accessing light. Um, and there's quite a few here. Um, and this is going to be an ongoing effort. Um, and a lot of the community members who have been supportive of uh, the purchase of the property and of um, the design process have, have also committed to sort of um, this park is going to be stewarded not just by the DPW or the Conservation Commission but really by uh, the whole community. Um, and so we've already had a, a few uh, trash cleanup days over the last couple years with the Trails Committee and with the Neponset River Watershed Association. Um, and this is our first Invasives Removal Day, um, but we expect to um, hopefully have it become an annual tradition going forward. So um, I'm, I'm so happy to, to see all of the people here and hopefully welcome them back in the future. And before too long, you know, hopefully I'll be welcoming them back to um, a park with, with a much more developed trail network and um, you know, that feels like a, a real uh, community space for, for everyone to enjoy. Norwood News will be following this project all along the way, so stay tuned for more updates. Tuesday night, the Recreation Department hosted their first ever block party down at Bond Street. The night was rocking with music, games, pizza, face painting, balloon animals, and more. 
The next block party will be at the Balch on August 4th, and as a reminder, pre-registration is required, so please visit the recreation page on the town website for more information. Now let's toss it over to Megan Corbett with the latest in summer sports. Hi, I'm Megan Corbett, and here's the latest in summer sports. In Little League news, the 12-year-old district team was eliminated in the tournament, but had a respectable 6-3 record in district play. The Babe Ruth 13s played tough, but lost two games by one run. They were eliminated and are now playing in the Braintree Summer League. The 14s finished 3-1 in the round robin tournament. They beat Plymouth 8-6 in the quarterfinals and advanced to the state semis against Newton. The 15s also qualified for the states after a big win against Taunton. NCM was at the Balch to cover the game, and the broadcast team of Arbo and Dupa were on the mics. Let's go get some highlights. Frankie's got a quick bat played for the Rangers. Uh, real quick bat. Real quick hands. That's in the gap. Ooh, nice piece. That's an excellent swing from Hernan. Oh, what a piece. That'll drive nice in a run. piece. Yeah. Oh, what a piece. Good battle, though. That's going to get there. That's in. That wind is brutal. Great, great call by AJ. Yeah, I would have hung up on that, but... Uh, ooh. Great relay. Oh. That's an excellent call. Great him. call. There's a ball. It was there, but he got under it. Nice play. Nice play. Let's see. Great that was an excellent What play. a play, huh? <laughs> What a play. Ooh, nice there we go. That's going to get down and get <laughs> two, three runs. Yeah, there we go. What a throw. It wow. was, yeah, that was impressive. What a, what a change up there. Very smooth. Yeah, Jim Gonza. Yeah. Very impressed with these guys. So I guess here at uh, at Balch, Balch Field tonight, uh, the Norwood 15s win in a walk in a slaughter rule. Uh, this team played as well as they could today. Uh, they brought it. This is exactly what they're built for. They can hit the ball. They play great defense. We practice it all the time. Big train current pitched a great game. Uh, when we come out and we're ready to play, this is exactly what should happen. Thanks, AJ. Unfortunately, the 15s lost to Brockton and were eliminated from the tournament. Moving on to Legion post 70 team. Let's just start with that. It's always nice to beat Walpole. The rival matchup was under the lights at Balch in an important game to keep Norwood's tourney hopes alive. Jonathan Demeray was on the mound and Norwood was quickly down two to nothing in the first inning. George Tolman led off with a single to right field and was eventually driven in by a hit up the middle by Demeray. And it was two to one, Walpole after one. In the bottom of the second with runners on second and third, Tolman was back up and here's George Hawley and Greg Abergas with the call. Nice hit piece of it. That, is, that in the gap. is in the gap. He had to go down and get that he ball. Elevated that. Here he comes. Wow. I push that ball Great opposite the field. There is a lot of strength there. In the gap, out to the fence, and what hustle. Going around. That was clutch. The game turned into a pitches duel and the score remained 3-2 until the sixth inning when a pass ball made it 4-2 Norwood. In the top of the seventh, with two runners on and two outs, Sean Dittmeyer came in for relief and sealed right. the win. That's it. All right. Big win for Norwood. Excellent game tonight. Yeah, it is. Excellent game. The Legion team wore special shirts for this game as a tribute to former player and newly elected NHS Hall of Famer Bob Goonan. Bob was a big part of the Legion's state championship teams in the 80s and is currently battling a serious illness. Nice touch by coach Paul Smargedellis for paying special tribute to his former teammate. Tune in to NCM to watch this exciting win against Walpole. The team had a strong second half of the season and has qualified for the District 6 Senior Decision West playoffs. And finally, the spring accolades are still coming in in a shout out to TVL All-Star Aaron Sullivan who was named a Globe and Herald All-Scholastic in golf, and to TBL All-Star George Tolman, who was honored by the Boston Herald as an All-Scholastic Honorable Mention in baseball. Great job, and congratulations to the both of you. That's it for sports, and we'll be right back with more Nord news after this break.
In government this week, the Middle School Building Committee met on Monday. The MSBA completed the first of three periodic design reviews and determined that $6.2 million must be cut from the project design. Justin Tebow, a principal with AI3 Architects, explained how the supply chain and gas prices have dramatically increased the initial estimates. The increase of what we're seeing is primarily in steel and metal studs. The roofing membrane, roofing membrane has gone through the roof. <laughs> um, piping, um, the metal in piping um, is going crazy. The mechanical systems, ductwork, electrical systems, and diesel fuel. Uh, diesel fuel here is tied to the site cost. Um, for a couple of reasons, well, for one reason, obviously everything on site, earthwork, they're using diesel fuel to excavators, bulldozers, palers, everything. However, diesel fuel really starts to sort of globally affect everything. Everything needs to be shipped, whether it's locally or nationally or internationally, um, but it just sort of embeds itself with everything. So looking from SD to DD alone, um, there was an increase of just over 10%, which is unheard of. The committee spent two hours reviewing almost 100 possible reductions recommended by AI3 and Compass Project Management. The committee will be meeting again on Monday, July 18th to continue the review and take a final vote on these reductions. At the planning board meeting on Monday night, town planner Paul Halkiotis updated the board on the status of the plans filed by Norwood Hospital. The planning department has not received all of the plans needed to be reviewed for next week's meeting. Chair Ernie Pachikowski questioned whether or not to cancel this meeting. So Paul, that begs the question, do we need to have the 18th meeting? I mean, I, to be honest with you, I don't want to have another meeting with the hospital unless we're ready. It, we're, we're at the point where we can, we'll have conditions where we can close the we can close the meeting. Um, is, is, the, is, is it fair to say that do we need the meeting on the 18th? It, it, it's hard to say right now, and I'm, I'm reluctant to kind of make that decision right now and slam the door. Okay. It, it's possible that that, that they um, can get the information we need and it can be reviewed. Um, so I'd like to kind of hold off on that. All and right. I, we can connect back with the board later this week if it appears that, you know, that deadline's not going to be met. Chair Pachikowski reiterated the board's commitment to working with the hospital to move the project along, but emphasized the need for the hospital to meet them halfway. But they have to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. they got to they okay. come to the table too. I mean, they want this. Yeah. No, I, I, I Get agree. Us stuff. I, we know that they, we tell them, you know, we'll help you, but... And I, I know. We're I, not I, just going to, you know, the, I, I think it's unfair for the town to, to whitewash this thing and just say, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with stormwater and, and, and not have unresolved issues. You know, we got a 24 inch pipe going on a 12 inch pipe, you know, and, and, and it, it, there are some, un, so I just don't think it's fair to the town. And, and I mean, they're going right, ahead with their demolition, they're, they're okay. The planning board is scheduled to meet next week if all plans from the hospital are received in time for the planning department and board to review. On Tuesday at the Board of Selectmen's meeting, the board was briefed on potential permanent hybrid meeting legislation by town council attorney Karis North. This legislation comes as the Municipal Relief Act comes to an end on July 31st. This act authorized temporary changes to open meeting law allowing full remote meetings and hybrid meetings. Attorney North advised the board to contact their legislators to vote these new permanent regulations down for several reasons. Every public body must have public meetings remote and access and accessed remotely to the public. So that means not just the select board, not just the planning board, every public body regardless. So that is, according to the MMA, over 10,000 uh, 10, entities, bodies within the Commonwealth. Um, the, um, the access, it's a little bit unclear to me from the legislation, but the access has to be through internet, video, or other video technology. It would no longer allow phone-in access, which is also a significant concern to um, anybody who doesn't use the internet, isn't comfortable with the internet, or can't get good internet service. So this is a, a more of an issue out, I think, in Western Massachusetts, and certainly not an issue in the town of Norwood with your own broadband facility, but it is certainly an access uh, problem for a lot of people. So um, you no longer will be able to call in on your cell phone to participate in the meeting. 
Um, the, uh, the amendment also requires that one third of the members have to be physically present in a physical location at wherever the meeting is being held. So also, it can't be entirely remote. Uh, it's either in person or hybrid. Selectman Donnelly raised the point that this is an unfunded mandate that would create costs for NOID if it is adopted while the state is currently operating at a surplus. Because with each, most of these items, there will be a cost. Um, my understanding currently, for example, is that while we do remote meetings, and we're pretty, pretty sophisticated in terms of how we're employing it, we do not use the automated speech recognition technology for live captioning, right. which, which the state would be telling us to do in, without an opportunity for us to figure out, well, <coughs> how do we do that and what will it cost? And what I, what I think is a little more irritating to me is that things like this come into, into unfunded mandates at a time when the state is running a surplus and that they're providing um, uh, rebate checks to a number of residents where you know, we, we haven't had a chance, and, and yet they come before us and say that you, the municipality, need to um, not only employ this technology but come up with the money to do it. I think the cleanest thing would be really to kind of, kind of just do an extension of current status until such time as a new session starts it could be more appropriately vetted. Well, that's it for government this week. For complete government coverage, tune into the NCM Government Channel or watch it on demand at NordCommunityMedia.org. Stay tuned after this break for more town news. Hello, I am Mary Foley. You are watching Norwood Community Media, your home for all things Norwood. Last December, construction started at Peswick Park in Norwood to remove the current dam and to fix the stream bank along the river. Conservation agent Holly Jones is back to update us on the progress of this project. Yeah, absolutely. So the progress is that our project is actually substantially complete. And as of today, uh, Wednesday, July 13th, uh, this area is now reopened to the public. Um, so we're here at Peswick Park off of Sumner Street, where there's been a major construction project ongoing uh, since December to remove a legacy dam um, and quite a bit of the sediment that had built up behind it, um, turning a pond into, into more of a shallow marsh. Um, so the, the project was the dam removal and then um, reconstruction of a stream bank. Um, the stream is uh, very engineered to stay exactly where we put it. So there is at least four feet of stone um, going down um, from where you see the, the top layer of stone in this bed. We have, um, maybe you can see behind me these, um, piles of timbers driven into the ground that are actually holding buried logs in place that will stabilize that stream bank for decades to come. Um, and what we've done is uh, recreate uh, the stream similar to what might have been here uh, before the, the dam, um, but making sure also that it's never going to sort of like erode its banks, um, you know, by, by the neighbors um, 
and making sure that the, the habitat is really great for one of the primary uh, reasons why we did this, which is the cold water uh, species that live here, including brown trout and brook trout. Um, so that's another reason why you see so many boulders and cobbles and there's um, shallower riffles and deeper pools, um, as well as replanting. There is more replanting. When I say we're substantially done, there is more planting that's going to happen in the fall. So <laughs> I'm talking to you in um, July and uh, we, we were able actually to turn some cost savings on the project into being able to buy some bigger trees to go in in the fall, which is a better time for planting. Um, so, so there will be some revisiting of the site for that um, and revisiting, um, of course, uh, to, to also, um, the plan is to put some interpretive signage to explain uh, the history of this park and the pond and the project, as well as some of the, the ecosystem here. Um, and so we're not, you know, walking away from Peswick Park, but um, I'm so thrilled that we're, we're done with construction uh, and the public is able to, to come back and check it out. It's exciting to see another great outdoor space for Norwood residents to explore. And finally, the Senior Center was jumping and jiving last Friday night. DJ Dave Valerio is on the keyboard singing and mixing up some great tunes from the 60s and 70s. Yeah, so we're trying something different. The Senior Center has a dance. Uh, it's like a ballroom dance on the third Friday of every month. They've been doing that for years, 20 some years, maybe more than that. Um, and we're trying something different to get some of the younger seniors out. And they want like 60s and 70s music and they want dance music. So uh, there's a lot of single ladies out here and they want to do that kind of thing. So uh, that's what we're doing today. And I'm, uh, I'm playing the keyboards and singing, but I'm also DJing a little bit for all those songs I don't know that I can play for them. And uh, the house is rocking. It's a great party tonight. It's really good. Oh, well, this is, this is important for the center. This is a real thriving center and it's great. And they're always trying to reinvent things and think of the needs of like the new seniors coming up because that's how you feed the system. You know, you need your like, younger seniors to come up and uh, you know, the older seniors fade away or can't get out here, that kind of thing. So you're always thinking of reinventing the place. And this is this dance is like the, the total idea of that. You know, let's get something for the younger seniors, the people in their 60s and 70s. And uh, you know, we still have the other stuff for like the people that are 80s and 90s. But uh, this is something for the younger seniors to get them in here. And it's a draw because once they get in, there's so many other things that are going on here at the Senior Center. They should be really taken advantage of. So it's great for them to see the place, you know. Looks like seniors of all ages were having a great time. Well, that's all for Norwood News. To stay up to date with Norwood Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.